Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek, and today we're going to be taking a look at this Apple Watch Ultra. It got wet while it was on a charger, and it's since stopped working. Let's see if we can figure out why it stopped working, and see if we can fix it. Let's get into the video. All right, so here we've got this Ultra. And given that it was wet on the charger, I'm going to start here on the back. We'll grab our P5. And we'll take out the four Penelope screws. Maybe the water just got into the back somehow. So we'll take our little pry tool, push it in, give it some leverage, and see if we can pop this back off. We'll grab another tool and give it some tension. See if we can pop that off. Now I'll run my fingernail around it and break up that seal that, that it has. All right, one of the little watch strap buttons fell out. It does have two mini springs on it that you gotta watch out for. You don't wanna lose them. And I'm definitely getting the smell of kind of what it, like a, a bad battery smells like, and kind of like that corrosive smell. You know, I wonder if their description of it getting wet was it went in, uh, you know, was that it actually went in the toilet and they didn't say it because it smells like that. And we can see all of the corrosion right there. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the back. And all right, here's the other one. And you can probably not even see these, but they're the they're springs. All right, so some evidence of water damage here, but that's just can be cleaned up with a brush and alcohol and evidence of moisture getting inside. So I think that we're going to have to open this up from the screen side of things. But for now, we're going to take off these little screws and brackets from this side. Entering from the front, it's quite tricky on these guys, but with enough practice, it's not horrible. Just going to take a, a tool and we're going to wedge it down into that teeny tiny gap. Got some isopropyl alcohol that we'll add around the border here. And then I'm going to take a piece of plastic. I've got a nice sharp edge that I'm going to use to puncture and pierce through the adhesive on the display by wiggling it back and forth. If you get anything at all from this video, I hope it's a better understanding about how to open these watches in the first place without ruining the displays. If you are finding this video useful, feel free to drop a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, and after a few minutes, you get the plastic to kind of go under and dip under the, the, the frame by wiggling that edge back and forth. And then you can start to slide it down towards the corners. And with it being under the bezel to the screen, you should be able to push it around and start to slice through any of the adhesive. Some more isopropyl alcohol to help it not stick so much. We'll slide around and we'll continue to add isopropyl alcohol as it dries up. And then eventually the screen will start to wanna kind of pop up. We'll move the plastic around continuously. Make sure we break all of the adhesive bond. And you can see the screen starts to lift there. Add some more isopropyl alcohol. I can help lift the screen off the rest. And then I'll slice through the last side here. And now the screen is free. And we can see already some more water damage here. We need the battery. Flip the watch over. And we're going to add some isopropyl alcohol to the flex here on the back of the display. Just to loosen it a little. And I take out these screws that are holding down the battery. All right, I'll take off this little bracket. Here has a sticker, and it looks like the battery connector corroded off. See, that's where the connector is supposed to be, and there's nothing but corrosion there. All right, we'll remove one piece at a time here. Out comes the battery. Oh, look at that, fun one of the antennas. And look at the corroded connector there. It's just gone. And out comes the Taptic engine. See the corrosion? On that connector and all of the corrosion down here. Here's the battery connector. Let's pop this one. Actually we'll add some isopropyl alcohol to help break up the corrosion a little bit and we'll pop that one. Let's take off the display. There's a couple screws here and a little bracket. Now we can pop the display connector. Let's take a look at that. Looks like there's a little bit of corrosion on it but I don't think that it's really too bad. This display might still work. Hard to say. So in order to take out the motherboard, we do have to remove a bunch more screws. So that's what we're going to do. And then this thing can slide out. There's a bunch of flex cables, and brackets that you need to be more aware of on this model than on previous Apple watches. One of the nice parts about 
the uh, the model though is that the motherboard has very little surface components exposed. The ones that are exposed are the connectors. The connectors are a lot easier to replace than anything else on a motherboard from in my opinion. So all right, let's take a look at the inside of this watch here and look at all of that corrosion. It's like every connector has been damaged. It's gonna need a quite a bit of work. All right, what do we still need to get this guy out? Okay, so the crown flex here. I wonder how that comes out. Let's pop this guy. Need to get behind this flex. Man, that's an awkward angle. And look at that connector. It just came right off. It's so corroded. All right, let's see if that's enough to get this motherboard out of the frame. Okay, and the motherboard is now free. And that connector got corroded pretty good on this side. That connector is totally gone. How about the display connector? Still kind of there. All right, so this clearly needs a bunch of work. Let's see what happens real quick with some of these connectors. Add some isopropyl alcohol. Let's take a little brush. Let's see what happens with this connector when I try to pop off the broken piece. And there it comes. Let's brush down the connector and see. That connector is in good shape. That's awesome. And there's a good chance that this connector is just fine. The pins are quite oxidized, but they might still be making, might still have continuity, so I won't worry too much about it. That connector is completely gone, and that connector is quite damaged, so this flex will need to be replaced. Let's clean up this one a little bit. For those of you wondering, this right here, this brush is a fiberglass brush. It uh, scrubs away corrosion really well, and it'll polish up the metal, and you can see how small it is, Look at that battery connector area. Like the pads are still there. They're just heavily oxidized. You can see they're really gray. And one of my big questions is how's this connector looking? So let's get some isopropyl alcohol on it and we'll scrub down joints there. It looks okay. We'll clean up just the uh, corrosion that we can see. It's all like a, none of this is really crucial it just makes it look better now let's pop apart this bracket so we can look at these connectors we'll pop this guy apart and at first look it looks really good there's definitely some corrosion but i think that'll clean up really nice yeah it's definitely oxidized still but it'll clean up a little bit of solder flux and down inside here disconnect this guy Definitely not as pretty. Let's see how it looks after cleaning. Alcohol, get out our brush and freshen it up a little bit. Not bad, not good though. And let's pop this last little connector on this bracket piece. And it's definitely sheared away with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a scrubbing though. But with a little brush scrubbing, those are still good pads. I seriously doubt I'll be able to get the connector out, but let's clean up the back side of it and see if the pins are still there. They are. Let's pick at this a little bit, clean it up, scrape at the oxidation a little bit, and it'll be easier to solder. Alcohol, a little bit of a brush. Let's see if we can pop this guy out. And with a little bit of persuasion, connector's out. Let's see how this cleans up. Add some isopropyl alcohol. Take the big brush first, scrub it on down. And we'll add some more and we'll go in with the fiberglass brush. Some of these connectors are gonna need a little bit more attention, but for the most part, they look like they'll at least work. Let's take a look at the connector for the crown. We'll scrub down both sides. So we're missing part of the connector. It's the grounder piece out here. The crown is really tricky to replace because you basically have to get a tool. See that kind of white spot down in there? There's a little bolt that has two flat sides. You can see one of the sides shining there. If you Both sides of that, you clamp onto it and then the crown will screw off and then the whole thing will come apart. This will slide out from the inside, but it's really, it's just tricky to, to do. A very specialized wrench, I guess you would call it, to get in there. So added to my cart, I'm looking at a battery, and a loudspeaker, power button, main flex cable, battery connector, other flex, the crown, the vibrator, and new adhesive, totaling to 52 bucks. I'm gonna go ahead and order these so we can continue this video in part two. I still have a lot to do on this Apple Watch Ultra. Let me know in the comments below, if you saw a watch that was this water damaged, would you even want to attempt it? We'll follow up next week to see if I was able to fix it. I guess regardless, 
we'll see what happens when we get all those parts and we replace all the all of the components. Hopefully it'll work. We'll see. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.